fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead, marlin, or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Now, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a big show coming away tonight. All the regular stuff, plus have your say on the Queen's, Queen's Cliff boat ramp. Uh, we're going to tell you how. Talk Wild Trout Conference. Wow, boys, I tell you what. It's coming it's up. It's going to be big. And there's been some naughty boys up on the Acheron River oh, this week. No. And we're gonna, we haven't had a, um, <laughs> oh. a bust on yeah. the show for a while, have That's we? That's right. Yeah. It's been pretty tame over the winter. winter. <laughs> well, these idiots, I tell you, there are always some idiots that just... Have yeah. to take too much. They do. It's not a lot. Can't they, help they, themselves. They didn't take ah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just took too much. They got busted. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting that uh, we're going to talk a bit about better boating Victoria tonight. Ads. Um, Coronella boat ramp is now open. We'll talk about that. Yes. Hastings is well in the planning. And old Donny. Oh, talking about Donny. Ninety four year old Donny. No. Trello, I think even you what? offended him last week. Get out. We got it. No, we got it wrong. Didn't, didn't even say anything. Well. We got it wrong. I, I think I mentioned he was 97. Do you know that the day before he turned 70? Yeah. I was out by oh, 27 really? years. <laughs> I mean, he looks 97. So I, got, I got into trouble by association. You did. Like, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Um, Speaking of trouble by association, <laughs> I got in trouble by association today. Yeah, we'll get to for? that later. Yeah. No, what for? It might have something to do with the Coronella boat ramp. <sighs> well... <laughs> well <laughs> stick your head up. <laughs> knocks off. Charlie, yeah. do you get people coming into the shop saying that You've been controversial and you shouldn't have. Oh, for years. That's <laughs> what, that's what it's about. weird if someone comes in and doesn't mention that's it. What I'm about. That's, oh. what, that's what I do. No, but I meant because of the show. <laughs> oh, the show's a, a very small part of my controversial thing that I do. <laughs> well, can you go a bit harder on the show then? Because uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about No, right? Betty of yeah. Coronella, she's angry with us. Oh, oh. All the Collab and Water board are angry with us. Yeah, well. A few other people. Coronella Coron Angling Club. Coronella Angling Club. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. All right, president. folks. Vice president. <laughs> let's, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Now let's kick it off mm -hmm. with uh, a man that is just a gun fisherman yeah, and his son. It. And his grandkids and his other sons yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It's just but, the name. Uh, yeah, the Rinaldi name is renowned for good fish. And Brian Rinaldi headed out onto Western Port out of the new boat ramp at Coronella. Nice. Last mm -hmm. week. It's Have a fish. look at that for a fresh fish. I mean, the blue spots, the blue edges of the fins, and mm. that is a new season. Straight spot. out of the water. Is. That's a nice fish. Beautiful new season. But Rinaldi he looks Brian. like a racing car driver too, doesn't he, Brian? Oh, I think he, he was a the, trotter. Got the, you know, he got the... Wasn't he? Got no, the shirt no, he's on been there. painting for as long as I've known him. <laughs> I was just making it up. <laughs> <laughs> on you, Brian, great supporter of the show. Um, all right, this is one of your mates, Charlie. Oh, Nando Barbanera. Oh, that's an easy one, Dave. That's yeah. not bad. That's why I said it. Yeah. I didn't throw it to Charlie. <laughs> Nando Barbanera. Don't mind his chicken new either. Fish. 82 centimetres. Look at the blue. Yeah. Look mm. at the blue in that beautiful snapper. Nothing and that's uh, how you can tell it's a clean fish, mm -hmm. but in clean water, yeah. not the resident fish that are a bit darker and just absolutely beautiful. Nando, well done. So you'd say that's one of the ones coming into the bay. It's coming into the bay just yeah, recently. It's clean. Yep. yep. Well done. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> another fish. Lysarts is on fire. Yep. That's did pretty I, good. Did I tell you the story about Lysarts? But it hasn't been licensed for well, 64 I million there. years. I worked, work there. I worked there for 17 years. Right. And yeah, and yeah, 97 years and ago. It, no, no, it, was re, it was renamed BHP and then BHP Steel, and then Blue Scope Steel, It'll yeah, at least 25 years ago. But it's still named Steel. It'll always be Lysarts. No, no, but it's mm. still called Lysarts. And mm -hmm. Sam Triplett got out, uh, even though he's a triplet. He goes all right, he, Sam. He yeah, features yeah. in the report quite heavily through the shop. Oh, a couple uh, of nice fish, too. He knows what's up. Yeah. Cracker fish. A pair of twins. Yeah, well done, Sam. Unlike triplets. If he'd have got three, it would have been triplets, <laughs> which would have confused us with his surname. <laughs> That's right. He got mm. twin snappers. Don't listen to him, Don't worry about Sam, they're idiots. Excellent, Sam. Uh, next one. Have a, it's so good to see the kids out fishing. Yep. And what better way is yep. to take them out on the King George Whiting. Uh, Western Port's on fire. There's no doubt about it. Have a look at this. Clara Nackick. 
uh, a beautiful King George Whiting, one of seven that she landed that day at the middle spit. Great species yep. for the kids to get stuck into. Yeah. Try and hold on to one of them. Yeah, I hope right. she had it in breadcrumbs that night. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> that completes she did it. Most of it because you're missing a tooth there, uh, yeah. <laughs> Clara. <laughs> I have to chew it a bit more. Hey, often. I'm just looking. No, she's not a Collingwood supporter. You can't tell. No. Well, you never know. No, no, it's all right. Oh. All right, let's head over to uh, Port Phillip because there's been some good fish caught uh, yes. in Port Phillip. What is astounding me, Adam, is the amount of land-based snapper. And traditionally, we would talk about land-based snapper off the rocks. Yep. Uh, in heavy winds. Now, we I should mention, we're giving a talk on land-based snapper. We are. Tomorrow night at the Frankston mm -hmm. RSL with the Victorian Fisheries Authority. But what astounds me is the amount of good fish, and I'm talking five plus kilos, mm -hmm. off regular jetties like the Mornington Pier. I would go as far to say as so far this season, I've got <coughs> a feeling it's all about to change, but the, the snapper fishing off Mornington Pier has been more productive. Yep than it has been for the guys in the boats. Yeah, really? Because we've had those really strong westerlies. Yeah. Which yeah, the yeah. peninsula thrive on, and check but this out. But some of the days aren't yeah. that choppy. And no. Darren Matthews, have a look at this. Six he's a local two. legend, Darren. I've yeah, now you can't see how choppy it is here because he's yep. out yeah, the front, front of the shop. shop. <laughs> uh, but 6.2 yeah. kilos of beautiful snapper yeah. caught off the Mornington Pier. Yeah, now Darren's a local legend. I've, I've been lucky enough to meet him several times mm. when I did a few years down at Mornington. Mm -hmm. Yep. He will sit through yeah. the nastiest weather you've ever seen, yeah. and yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. he gets fish like that. Yep. Mm. Well, obviously not in yep. dangerous conditions because that's mm. just silly. Some but people won't catch a fish that good no, off all a season. boat this year, yep. yeah. and they'll blow like 700 on fuel for the yeah. season, <laughs> yeah. and he's just wandered down to Mornington Pier and got a 6 smack to kilo. Like in the worst weather, like I, I would be looking at that same pier out of the pub window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not right, the only let's, one. <laughs> let's move a little bit along, heading towards Melbourne. Aspendale has been a great spot and uh, so features. Hot spots recently? Yeah, it was a hot spot yeah. recently, but uh, Jenny Searle, have a look at that. A beautiful, uh, fish. again, Jeez, good fresh, fish, aren't they? good yeah. looking, fresh fish. A lot of fish coming into the bay. Nice looking fish. Excellent. Yep. Well done, Jenny. Uh, Karam, have a look at this one. Tom Patterson, tell you what, so good to see the young kids. Oh, Tommy. Oh, yeah. yeah. So good to see the young kids out fishing. It's just me. Has that fish got an excessively large tail? It has got a large tail, hasn't it? Yeah. It's going to be a big fish. It's got to grow into its tail. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> swum all the way from South Australia. Once so he's Might have grown into uh, hand. pretty fit, I would say. That's right. Um, some more great land-based fishing up at Port Melbourne. Yep. Always mm -hmm. warmies, Port Melbourne, any yep. of those piers up there just seems Start that they up there. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's always like it's a degree or two higher, right up there. Very, very top end of the bay. Yep. And Dale and Saeed uh, both caught some lovely oh, fish wow. yeah. at Port Melbourne. <laughs> Have a look at that. No yep. small fish around. It's, Far out. It's incredible. Just outside the third marker on the left. To to think... Just made that up. Yep. <laughs> Charlie, to think, though, that... Uh, in South Australia, the fishery is about to close yeah. for three years. Yes, that's right. The snapper fishery yep. closed for three years. In WA, they have a ban on um, on demersals. certain species, demersals, mm -hmm. at this time of year Correct. for three months. Mm. And we're seeing that quality fish off from South off Australia. Port Mel no, <laughs> swimming off around. Port Melbourne. <laughs> um, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon the management of fishing in Victoria yep. from the minister. To uh, to the CEO, yep. we're in good hands. And yeah. the fisheries advisor, Heidi. The fisheries advisor, Heidi's had yep. a lot to do with the That's snapper right. catch this year. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, but the seriously, fr from yeah. everyone, from Paul Hamer, you know, we've got the yeah. best scientist. Yeah. Um, Rod Barber's coming along tomorrow night to Frank Snow's so oh, yeah. talk, and yep. you know, to the best enforcement officers who are, are yep. also you know, a lot of education. It, it, the whole chain of command yep. in fisheries has produced. A fishery yeah. that's world class. Because yeah. it's not even on the radar class. in Victoria. We're going from strength to strength as far as the fisheries and progressing South, nicely. Like you say, it's management. Good recruitment. It's, it's uh, absolutely, it is. And South yeah. Australia have yeah. just they they've hit rock bottom. Yeah, they have. You yeah. don't get you don't get. Any. I thought they would have left one fish mm. on their catch, like one to get people enticed out there, but they no. didn't, they didn't have a. Charlie, moment. they're yelling at us to put the next idiot up. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, the next uh, <laughs> next catch of the week up. Have a look uh, at this. Yeah. Uh, yellow belly in the on the Oh, oh <laughs> Stephen. Stephen Victor, Victor. Travel. That's right. Not that the yellow? first time you've been in Catch of the Week, Charlie. No, oh, I know. It's there for a pretty long time, yeah. That's, that was... Uh, it's good yellow. Yeah, thank Where's you very that? much. Jerusalem it was up Creek. in Jerusalem Creek. The, yeah. uh, had a bit of a comp up there in the weekend and uh, it was very, very bad weather at points at times. 
So I decided to just go outside the uh, Botel, uh, which is up there, yeah. and just fish across the across the arm of the Jerusalem Creek. And Bunch of scrubbies. Black plastic. Oh, black yeah. soft plastic. Yeah, for, found him on the sounder. Then the weather got a bit rough, so I actually went back to the same spot and just worked that black plastic oh. and, uh, and caught that one. And I caught a couple of others, not, not as big as that. Yeah, nice fish. Stuff, but yeah, there's plenty of fish up there. Like you just got to you just got to work it and yep. use yeah. your sounder and and up. You know, yeah, because you were sounding like snapper, weren't you? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fish to yeah. fish. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, like Trelly, if you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pick to info at Go, go boy! Yeah, I want to go fishing. And coming up next, uh, Fisheries News, details on how you can have your say on Queenscliff, Queenscliff Boat Ramp, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing We know what you'd rather be doing We know what you've really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wear the line Every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne It's now time for some very fishy news you reckon, Adam, that we dribbled through Catch of the Week? Oh, there's a bit on that <laughs> there's one. A, there's, a, there's so much news, I doubt that we'll get through this. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be a lot of dribble. <laughs> I can just, I can feel it Fair starting enough. to come on. Uh, all right, let's kick it off with some good news. Um, the fifth conference about wild trout in Victoria is about to happen. It's Talk Wild Trout. And uh, some details up on your screen. Uh, it's free and it's a great chance to improve your trout knowledge and fishing success. You can see there the details. It's uh, 23rd November, it's in Mansfield. There's a website there. Please jot it down while I tell you what's gonna go on. The keynote speaker this year is Hilary Hutchison. We'll leave this screen up for a, a minute while people write that down. Hilary Hutchison from Montana. She's a trout guide, she's a fly shop owner. She's a journalist and filmmaker. And her family's passion for wild trout fishing and how North America is recognising all the benefits of spending time in the great outdoors with the people you love. There's some uh, status on wild trout fisheries in Victoria. There's health cards for the best rivers. Greg French is gonna talk about the value of wild trout fisheries. Um, you're gonna see how anglers are improving fish habitat. Uh, Martin Aldous, I don't know if you know Marty, used yeah. to be the editor of Victorian okay. Fishing Monthly, ex-director of Future Fish. Yep. He's talking about going off the beaten track. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a progress report on incubator stocking trials and uh, Robbie Alexander will finish it off with the fun of wild trout. I'll tell you what, if there's one conference you go to this, you go to the trout conference because it will be oh, so much info superb. That thing. And they usually so log it so well and give you that book to take away and yeah. you've got all the river stats and fish yep. numbers. And yep. Very good. interesting. Yep. I've got to tell your son, hmm. Ross, Ross yep. and his beautiful fiancée Maddie, yep that I may not be attending their engagement party that night. Because he double booked with a trout oh, conference. I know, you didn't, didn't think that out, did he? You didn't think that out <laughs> no, at all. No, 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 it's okay. Just saying, we'll giving your family you. notice. <laughs> well, and no, someone no. might have mentioned they want to have a game of tennis while we're up there. Yeah, Mansfield well, Open has moved well, to the trout conference. I think you lost it. Well, it took me six months to recover. I beat you, but Ross beat me in the final. Yeah, I'm very competitive. All right, <laughs> uh, all right let's keep going. <laughs> I, just, a bit of that I told you we were going to dribble. <laughs> <laughs> all right, over here. The, the headline is Coronella Boat mm. Ramp Revamp is complete. Hang on. Right. Wasn't this uh, done a week and a half ago or something? This is um, this is direct from the Department of Transport, Charlie. Direct. Yep. They they. And this is no disrespect to Better Boat in Victoria. They write the press release and then it goes to the Department of Red Tape for about a week and a half. Okay. So it opened, I think, on the Friday. Yep. The media release is dated Monday, but unfortunately it didn't get sent out till Thursday because of the red tape in the Department of Transport mm. over here. Mm. Anyway, we'll get along with it. Um, mm. Old news. The Coronella boat ramp reopened on Saturday 19th of October thanks to the completion of an upgrade that will allow more boaters and fishers to enjoy the water 
at Western Port this summer. The $1.4 million upgrade has seen the number of boat ramps at the site double from two to four, providing a much needed access boost for boats launching into the bay. That's great news for Coronella. A new accessible pontoon has also been delivered under the package as well as new fish cleaning tables that will allow people to clean their catch before heading home for a feed. We'll hear about the fish cleaning tables in mailbag. <laughs> The project will also include a review of ramp signage, parking and traffic management at the site to improve safety and access and reduce impacts on nearby residents. Yep. The upgrade is jointly funded is a jointly funded initiative, 1.1 million coming from the Boating Safety and Facilities Program way before Better Boating Victoria was even started, and a further 250 coming from the Victorian Fisheries Authority's Target 1 million plan. The project has been overseen by the Coronella Foreshore Reserve Committee. And it, this doesn't say that here, but unfortunately yep. without consultation with the Angling Club. Uh, that'll get us into trouble with the Angling Club. They'll be all in to see you there tomorrow, you Adam. Tick that box. That's yeah. enough of the bad news, all right? Uh, the next item, Queens, now this is how it should be done mm -hmm. with true consultation. Queenscliff boat ramp is getting an upgrade. Have a look at this. Nice. This is the way that new boat ramps are going to be run when they get an upgrade by Better Boating Victoria. And I cannot thank Catherine enough for the work that she's doing on several upgrades that were all election commitments. This one here, there is a drop-in uh, session tomorrow, Wednesday the 30th of October, from 3pm till 6pm at Queenscliff at the Town Hall. And you just got to drop bar's in. Open. I'm not sure the bar's open. <laughs> But you just got to drop in and just give the Better Boating Victoria staff a few ideas about how a good boat ramp at Queenscliff would look like. If your bar was open, you'd get better ones. Better you ones. probably would. <laughs> Eight lanes, demolish the playgrounds. <laughs> yeah. mm. Can I also say, uh, so that's not the only opportunity that you get to, to have your say on Queenscliff because, uh, and I know it's not announced in that, they're announcing that night tomorrow night, uh, that it is tomorrow night, but there will be a, a release of, um, of, of, I guess, a draft plan, and they will be holding a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with the public around about, and these are still to be confirmed, Saturday 30th of November, so that's still a while away. Yep, yep. Then there'll be an online consultation, which runs from about the 30th of November right through to the 9th of December. So, so much time dedicated to consulting with anglers, boaters, yep. and the people that actually use, use the these boat ramps. Hmm. Yep. And That's as you'll hear yeah. Makes sense, in mailbag it? about yep. Upper Colliban and Coronella, <laughs> when Again. lack of consultation exists, you just don't get what the people are looking for. So well done on that one. All right, a couple of comps coming up. Uh, the Port Phillip Bay Snapper Classic is on. Correct. Coming up. It's um, 15th, 16th and 17th November, a couple of weeks away. Uh, third year, whopping $30,000 in prizes. Uh, you don't even have to catch a fish to win a prize. Entrants are capped at 200. Uh, fishing begins at 4 a.m. So if, you, if you're fishing at 3.50 a.m. You're out. And you get spotted. Doesn't count. Yeah. You know, no fishing at 3 a.m. in the water at 4 a.m. Yeah. 4 a.m. <laughs> Keep them warm there. Presentations warm. at the Mornington <laughs> Civic Bowls Club. Port Phillip Bay Snapper Classic .com is how you enter that comp. The next comp, which is the big one that starts this Saturday. Correct. At the second. Yep. The um, Peninsula Snapper Challenge. Nine days. Now, this is, this is a great it's idea different. because, mm, yeah. you know, this time of year, it's one day is glorious. <laughs> yep. Like... Like today, it was yep. glorious. On Saturday, in Cranman, it hailed. Yeah, and it, it looked like it had well. snowed yeah. Yeah. at work. Um, so they're going to give you nine days to fish. You will get some good days in there. Um, there's three categories, open, junior, and kayak divisions. $20,000 in prizes. One in five entrants will win a prize. Snapper, PeninsulaSnapperChallenge.com. Get in it. It starts this Saturday. We've got some good weather coming next mm -hmm. week, and you should be in that comp. You'd be in for the kayak division, wouldn't you, Heads? Certainly will. Yep. Actually, I'd be busy at work then, won't I? Be flat yeah, out. Seven yeah. days, nine no days. days off. No, no excuse. Got to work every day. I don't have to. Okay, days off. Cool. Boss says Next so. one then. Uh, this one hot off the press today. Oh, these idiots. Breaking? Are, yeah, breaking news. Nice. Idiots have been found at Acheron. Oh, oh, is the headline. oh yeah. Here we go. Uh, no, <laughs> have, have a look at the photo here. We know most fishers do the right thing, but sometimes there's a few who <laughs> need a reminder of the <laughs> rules. Yesterday, Snobs Creek Fisheries Officers inspected two Melbourne men in their sixties 
who should know better. Should know better. 60s trolley on the Acheron River near Buxton. The men had exceeded their bag limit for trout and were using fish eggs as bait. Really? Oh. Which is not allowed. So they're oh. yeah, pulling well, it out It probably was the... when they were 15. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 1932, yeah. or whenever that was. Is that a that brag, was. Matt, they're on? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> this is one of the men, court, one of the men also <laughs> had undersized blackfish, which have a minimum legal size of 23 centimetres. Yeah. The duo will receive infringement notices totaling more than $1,000. No. That'll lead into their pension. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do people do this? Oh, it's, it, I, think, I think it's the old, the old blokes that are just set in their ways. You know, they've got to keep their neck muscles, you know, attuned. Because when they're doing that sort of stuff, they're always looking over their shoulder each way. Yeah. So it keeps their neck muscles going. All right. What would you do it for trout? Oh, it's definitely not worth it. A thousand bucks. And two blackfish. Yeah, no. Are blackfish good to eat? They are. Yep. Yeah. Very soft. Bit, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. But I just don't... Yeah, I mean, caught one. You catch a lot. You can buy a lot for a thousand bucks, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those guys will wish that they'd have paid a thousand bucks to Buxton Trout Farm to take as many as they want home. Yeah. yeah. Paid by the kilo to Mitch. Mm. I tell yeah. you what, it would have been a much cheaper day out to yeah. do that. They'll probably go on their gravestone to get caught by. Yeah. <laughs> do you think so? Some oh, people would have a bit way to go. Some people would have like a, tra- a wild right, trout on their yeah. tombstone. Yeah. Yeah, and these guys would have that picture of that plastic bag with eight, eight <laughs> the fish over their back. <laughs> brag, the brag, man. Oh, that, uh, I tell you what, <laughs> we'll, we'll go to a break. Product of the week mm-hmm. uh, coming up next. There's uh, a new fishing reel that hits the market, and uh, this one's for the budget conscious. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Fishing. All right, straight into product of the week, oh. and we have a new fishing reel for beginners. So we obviously we talk a lot about like people like Travis Dowling. Yeah, yeah, like Travis, we all into this one. Yeah, um, we we speak a lot about I guess mid to high end reels here because I guess that's where yeah. you see all the real technological advancements and bits and pieces. But the humble old FX has received an upgrade. So you would have seen these reels for many many years. There used to be th- basically three to four beginner reels. They've taken yep. the old FX, the Hyperloop, and the AX, and they've made them one, mm. which is the new FX. So looks mid-range. It does. It, it looks really nice. And where the upgrades come from, sorry, I'm trying to find the camera there. Where the upgrades come from, now extra bearing goes in straight away. So it's mm. now a three plus one, or two plus one, three in total. Yep. Yep. Um, so a little bit smoother, you get that smoothness for a little bit longer, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the biggest thing is the construction and the cut of the spool. So this cuts down on any wind knots forming, mm. it also improves distance. So when you're, you're learning how to cast, mm-hmm. the reel will actually work for you rather than against you, yep. and it will basically make that transition into lure casting or even casting with a bait just that little bit easier. These ones here come pre-spooled and ready to go. Mm-hmm. So if you're not sure what line to put on your reel or you're not sure what braking strain to use, these come pre-spooled and ready to go. So there's four sizes from a 1000, so uh, I guess very light salt water, fresh water yep. mm. uh, in the 1000, a 2500 and a 3000 and through to the 4000. Mm. Now, nine kilos of drag in the 4000. Wow. It's way more than you'll ever nine need. Nine kilos? Nine kilos. Way more than you'll ever need. Mm. The little 1,000, I think, has got about three and a half kilos of drag. Mm. So there's plenty of drag there to go around. These just slot in nicely. If you're not sure where to start mm. and you're a little bit shy, a little bit, you know, a little bit scared to ask questions about line and, and what line to use, these come ready to go yep. and you don't have to worry about it. So yeah. you can learn comfortably mm. and you get the feel of a mid-range mm. 
reel in your hand for a beginner's price. Would I have been? Would I be right in saying that the, in previous models, so the FX, the AX, and Hyperloop, Hyperloop, IX, and IX, yep. Yep. they didn't come in a one, two and a half, three and four. No, they didn't. Generally, so, so you've you'd, covered the range. That's here, right. You'd, you'd typically only see a twenty five hundred and a four thousand. Yeah. By adding the extra size reels in. Obviously, there's a lot more choice now. So mm. regardless of what fishing you can do or you want to get into, mm. Mm. you can buy a reel that's going to do the job for you without breaking the bank. And listen, they, they feel as smooth as anything else. Yeah. You kind of expect a beginner's reel to you know, be a little bit clunky, a little bit, mm. you know, a little bit rough. These are definitely not that. And with the two new additions to the sizes, it'll cover everything you want to do. Yeah. And 10-year warranty. Shimano's 10-year warranty. Yeah. Wow. So you covered well, that. that's a smooth transition through that you know, bail arm movement there. Some, sometimes you get to the, to the end and you really got to... Yeah, yeah, they get, yeah, yeah, they get a bit over. clunky. But that's, um, uh, but yeah, that's very yeah. smooth. Decent handles on them. Yeah. So it's good. Even nice. even the, the budget conscious the or budget those just conscious. getting into it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're, you know, you don't have to worry. Mm. You can still pick up some good gear. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so I'm sure Shimano really would have put a quality uh, mono uh, filament yeah, line definitely. on those because yeah, they wouldn't do anything. No, no. it would have been but, tested. But it would have been true. I don't know exactly what... The uh, what the pound rating is on all the line, but I think mm. you can a bit of common sense to that. Your, your one thousand is going to have that six to eight pound, twenty five, yeah. eight to ten, three thousand, mm. mm. you know, ten yeah. to twelve, and then Very twelve good. to fifteen for the four thousand. Yeah. Very impressive. There you go. I like it. Cracking nice. uh, new yeah. model FX. Mm. Yep. Get them in your shop now. Um, boys, change the subject. I want to talk about fish cleaning tables. So you know, a few uh, weeks ago uh, we were looking for the best, the best fish cleaning table in Australia. Yep. And uh, we had many pictures sent into us, and I'd have to say, uh, and they'll hate they'll hate us knowing the secrets out. But the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron has the best fish oh, clean tables yeah. in Australia. <laughs> that, that, that was a bit private. You know, yeah. No. So one one of the discussions I had with private. a few people today was that in in Victoria, and and even if you want to narrow it down, mm. or, in fact, I'd say in Australia, right? Because I fished a lot of places yep. in Australia, but mm -hmm. um, in Victoria, and if you want to narrow it down to Port Phillip and Western Port Bay. Yep. That every boat ramp that has a fish cleaning table has a different one. Yes, yeah, so there's no standard. Yeah, true. No, so if you pull up at a set of traffic lights, it's yep. pretty. You have a, an, an, a red, an orange, and a green, or amber yep. in the middle if you want. Yep. And they do the same job, and you expect to see the same. You go into a country town, yeah. you see a set of traffic lights. Yeah, unless you're pulling up to a drug test, you might see some different colours. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, you would. Yeah. But not that I know. Yeah. But uh, you go to a fishing, uh, you go to a boat ramp, yep. and you have a fish cleaning table. That's very Every interesting. Every single yeah. one of them is different, isn't it? That's very interesting. The one there is standard. We think well, yeah, standard. I think, you know, I think that's what Cold I think water. the Victorian Fisheries Authority needs to come up with a standard. Yeah, definitely. So they need what? What is it? Like, you know, so many of the newer ones yeah. are made of uh, stainless steel. Now yep. I went, I went down to Cannock Creek and had a look at that one a while back. Yep. That's been in about two years. The stainless steel, I'd say, was a mm. cheap um, make of stainless steel from a you know a country that makes cheap stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it started to turn black. Okay. Mm. The the waste disposal system, big yeah. pipe in the middle, yep. was chock a block full of rubbish. There's yep. no way you'd ever get a frame down there anymore. Yeah. Like they'd have to bring in an uh, oil rig drill or something. They should to... put like incinerators in them so you can put a bag at the no. bottom and get your burly out. Yeah, but Frankston's got that oh, trolley, and somehow yeah, right. it's all got clogged. Wouldn't it, well, it'll never work again? Oh, you can see it'll never it. work yeah, again. Press the button. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. this will never work again, right? Okay. So you've got that. So you've got we don't in in Victoria or Australia we don't have a standard for a fish cleaning table. Yeah, okay. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You so it's... then the other thing is, mm -hmm. where do you put a fish cleaning table, right? So, um, and we'll get on to Coronella soon, but they've <laughs> yeah. put theirs you know, next to the boat ramp, if you like. Not really on the yeah. waterline, but next to the boat ramp. But the car park yep. is, you know, 500 metres up the hill. So if you catch fish, there's nowhere to park your boat and your trailer yeah. to go and clean your fish. So you've got to go yep. and park it up there. Yep. Yep. Then you've got to walk 500 walk. metres down a hill, yep. clean your fish while you leave your thousands of dollars of, of sounders yeah. and gear in the boat unattended, unwashed. It just ain't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So you've yeah. got to have, par if you're going to use a fish clean table, if you're going to bother putting one in, you've got to, have it located where you can park near it, yeah. where you can see your gear, and then there is the argument about what do you do with the frames, the guts, and that sort of stuff. And mm. you know, someone said to me today, "Oh, you can't put it near the water because the stingrays and the seals 
will come around. Well, I tell you what, and, and a lot of my inspiration of doing stuff is what I see in Naruma because I went there for 25 years, right? Now they've got five boat ramps in their town, yep. in the small town of Naruma. Four of them have got fish cleaning tables. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the stingrays come around. Is, and that, they, is that such a bad thing? I don't think so. I don't, they kind of, it's like a character for the town. Yeah, but, we had, those, he is. but we had those people catching them here on the show. There oh, yeah, they got no, sorted out by the locals. Got that's got actually, out, that, so that was a no. terrible situation that turned yeah, into a good no. story. The yeah, locals got stuck into them and made sure. Yeah, that but that's one bad example. But mm. what I'm saying, I don't think it's, mm. I, I don't think it's a bad thing to be throwing your frames in and the stingrays yeah. coming. I mean, seal, seals are a little bit different. You can yeah. understand the, yeah. the issue there, but yeah. the stingray. But what we're going to ban st seals at 14 metres off Karen this weekend because there's going to be plenty yeah, of them. Are you going to ban seals on the rip when you're fishing for reserve, no, but I'm saying you can understand. Well, that's the dolphin reserve. They've got to oh, stay in there corralled in the no, dolphin yeah, sanctuary. Seal reserve too. Yeah, but you know what you I mean? Be, you so can understand the concerns of, a, mm. of attracting seals to the boat ramp. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? There's not going to be, well, you know, and potentially only, there's not going to be a group of kids sitting in a boat at 14 metres off But I think the Department of Red Tape who masquerades sometimes as Parks Victoria or yeah. Department of Transport. Sticks and Leaves Police. Sticks and Leaves Police. Yeah. They are saying, yeah. you know, we want them at least 100 metres from the water. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that, Adam? Well, it's, it's a bit so far away from the water, isn't it? It's going to be close to the water. Yeah. 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 So, again... The pelicans can't walk do we need? Yeah. Do we need the... <laughs> <laughs> with a full gut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we need a standard of where a fish cleaning table should be located at a boat ramp. Mm. I think we do. Yeah, I wouldn't be against and, it. And surely, mm. between the brains in Victoria, uh, someone can come up with the best, going. no, with the best yeah, way, yeah. Yep. Charlie, the best practice of yep. the, the design of a fish cleaning table, mm. the functionality and the location. Mm. I think it's time mm -hmm. that we had all those things because Better Boating Victoria is going to roll out some new boat ramps. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, it's part of the whole package, isn't it? With it a is. new boat ramp, it, yeah. you've got to get them right. Yeah. They're yeah. important. Yeah. I could yeah. like to see one at Shepparton. It would be in the middle of town, 100 metres away from the boat ramp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> no, you're setting the rules. You're making the good news. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not setting <laughs> the rules, I can tell you. I'm yeah. fighting them. Uh, coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag, unfortunately dominated by Coronella Boat Ramp and Upper Colliburn River once again. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wear the line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Wasn't even there. <laughs> bit, of, bit of mailbag here, Charlie. Yeah, there'll Isn't be a bit more next week, I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. What? More mailbag next week? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll be right. Oh, <laughs> come on, no. Let's, let's uh, pull it together, boys, and let's not try and offend anyone in this segment. All right? Let's get back to it after oh, yeah. spots. Okay. Uh, Dean writes to us, Fish... Oh, this is a cracker. Oh, this is the start of it. Fish Coronella mm -hmm. on Wednesday, uh, the 23rd of October. Upon getting to the ramp at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. I noticed five morons had parked their cars and trailers in the rigging bays. There's a sign that clearly indicates this is a rigging bay and you must not stay longer than 10 minutes. They were still there at 4 p.m. Oh. Yeah, 4 p.m. Oh, parked, parked. Did they have a little... Yeah, they parked in the... Mm. Look at it. Oh, we actually, mm. we might have a photo here. Did yep. they have a little piece there of paper There you go, there you go. So see those... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One, two, oh, one, two, three, five. Yep. There's five rigging bays, and um, they parked there. Needless to say, many people were pissed off as it caused mayhem when boats started to come back. I notified Better Boat in Victoria, but no response. And, the, well, it's not their role to do that. We need the ramp master back to control these idiots. That was from Dean. Now, um... Called morons before. It doesn't say idiots on there either. <laughs> Let me give you the tip. 
I cleaned it up. I cleaned it up. You don't want to offend anyone. I, I cleaned it up. But in all seriousness, that, that is an issue. Yeah. You just had I'm gonna come to it. I'm just going to come to it in a minute, though, right? So, and I'll tell you why people are parking here. Yeah. Uh, the next one's from Peter. I fished with my mate. Um, oh, hang on. No, this just goes on to something else. And, uh, Obviously not no, that, Okay, no, before I move on to the next one, because the next one's about something else. Um, I think we've got a second slide here of... Uh, okay. We grabbed this off Google Earth. Yep. From, um, I don't know, a year ago, right? And see the boat ramp on your right-hand side of screen? Yep. To the left of that is 29 car parks for trailers. Mm. Uh, the new design... Now, the new design was looking good up until they road marked. Mm -hmm. They took away those 29 car parks. Like 29 car parks for trailers, yep. they took them away. Yeah. They turned it into a launching lane, or two launching lanes, an exit lane, and five rigging bays. So there is no parking at the boat ramp anymore. Now, there are But it's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> <laughs> you can see uh, a little bit down the bottom of the screen, you can see on the grass there, there's cars with trailers. So that's the mm. overflow. Now that is the only car park. So yeah. no wonder. If those five people were elderly and can't mm. make it up the hill, mm. they're just going to park in the rigging base. Yeah. And this is what you get when you don't consult with mm. anglers and mm. boaters. When you take away the parking... But what... Um, and do you blame them? Do you blame them? Well, the, listen... It, on a quiet midweek day, right? Most... In fact, OK, out of 365 days a year... I think I'll have you say. There's probably 300 days where there's only 29 launches there. Mm. What? And now, like, all 29 of them are going to park up the hill. But at what point does common sense kick in? Now, that comes to the people designing the line marking on the new ramp. That comes Correct. to the people parking in... If it's clearly marked, like what yeah. Dean states, it's clearly marked you can park there for 10 minutes. Yep. Seriously, don't mm. park there. Mm. Doesn't matter Probably how ridiculous. Doesn't matter how ridiculous the, the, the setup is. The fact of the matter is you can't do it and it's clearly marked. But you should Can't be do painted it. on the ground. 10 minute car parking. Well, they still, they'd still do it though. It's if if, it the, now, if the sign's clear there. So at what point does, do people need to be held accountable for common sense? Yeah. And like I said, it comes back to the people designing yeah. with the line marking. Mm. I mean, at what point did taking 29 car parks out of mm. the actual launching facility, mm. at what point was that a great idea? Now, I might be speaking Never. out of turn because I mm. don't know the process they went through to come up with this. They might have a really good, well, well I can't think of it, but the, they might have a really good reason for not doing it. But if they're not there and these are clearly loading bays mm. and they're clear or rigging mm. bays and they're clearly marked, don't park there. Because mm. it's just going to create. Now I know you've had I know you've had members of the angling club contact you and say you know it's not our fault. Yeah, no, but I, I think I think the concern was they felt as though that we put words in their mouth. That yeah. They felt as though we that well, we were in... saying that they were all the ones they were the ones complaining. They were the ones and listen. Well, I tell We've you had why. members that have, yeah. and and we and yeah. you can't ignore that there was four hundred and fifty plus people on the Victorian Fisheries Authority Facebook page saying mm. the Connell yeah. boat ramp is a shambles. Yeah. Now and, and I'm I'm sorry if that upsets anyone, but it's the facts. That's what yeah. happened. And the the morning after the day that it was line marked, angling club members were ringing me at the shop. Yeah. So mm. it's. This you is know, what and, it is. And, and, if, and, and if we've caused a bit of grief for you, oh, I apologise, but the fact of the matter is you've mm. got a beautiful new boat ramp with no parking. Yeah. It's not a good and, look. And what it, what it turned, from what I can establish, the committee management didn't talk to anglers, didn't talk to boaters about, yeah. didn't consult mm. something. Did they consult anyone from the angling club? So there's a, there's a, oh. you'd, you'd assume that people from the angling club mm. are the ones that would use the boat ramp more often than not. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Was that consultation? I don't, know. I don't know. Anyway, things are going to change because... Uh, Catherine's running consultation sessions yep. on all new boat ramps. Well, you learn really now good. and whatnot. And those five yep. people. Yep. All right, uh, next one. Okay, this is from Peter, and this is in relation to Upper sure. Colliban Reservoir. Speaking of common Again, sense. I fish with a mate, this is what Peter says, that has cancer. It is nearly impossible to get a boat off the roof with him trying to help. If we could get back our small tra if we could back our small trailer to the water's edge he could enjoy this the fishing in the lake that the premier promised he's he's being alienated uh, because he is sick thank you once again for fighting for the common fisho mick he writes some of the ridiculous rules carry your boat and not drag it on water access one hour after sunrise and one hour before sen sunset mick from mars who wrote that now i grabbed a copy of the rules let's have a look at them up on the screen here 
This, and, is, good. this uh, is good for a laugh, Dave. I tell you, mm. you, you boys have got a copy there too. So let's go through this. We'll um, talk about this in the ad break. Boating. <laughs> boating. Entry and exit only from the designated launch points. Visitors must carry their boat to the water and they cannot be dragged. You can't be serious. I'm serious. Boats cannot be launched directly from a car or trailer. It's laughable. Mm -hmm. Can't be launched from a car or now, trailer. Hang on, get this. So we're talking about yeah. a water authority who doesn't ha actually have the authority to enforce rules, right? But, yeah. Yeah. No, no, but they have a rule, maximum yeah, two, two people in any one vessel. Yeah. What does what? it matter? Yeah. Maximum speed is five <clears throat> knots. Mm. Maximum length of the boat is 3.6 metres or 12 foot. But, Why does it matter? It doesn't. Why does it matter? And why? <laughs> what about the next one? I want to... <laughs> Let's put that back up here. If, so the, the Premier clearly stated he wants tinnies with electric motors on Upper Colobin Reservoir, but uh, the there was engine. he did not say that you had to unbolt uh, your engine. engine it, must be the removed. engine must be removed uh. if the boat is to be permitted in the water. Engines are not permitted in the recreational area. So you've got to unbolt your petrol you, motor. You want 15 horse. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And not carry it across, the, not drag it. But... Oh, okay. It gets worse. Uh, look, and, uh, we won't read out all that stuff there, but um, there was a, a big heading on another sign that I didn't put up on the screen here, but it says, on water users cannot land or exit craft at any location other than the single designated entry exit point. So if you've been out trout fishing in your tinny with your yep. electric motor that you've unbolted the petrol <laughs> motor from, yep. and you want to get out and stretch your legs or just stop and have lunch, you're not allowed to get out of the boat. Even yep. though you're allowed to pull no. up in your car and walk the entire perimeter of the lake, that's it. If you step out of your boat, yep. they still can't enforce you, One but they're going to tell you off. One thing you can do is yeah. you can go probably swimming without a life jacket. You're not, no, no, no swimming. No swimming. That's oh, fun, no mate. Swim. Oh, no, no, no. golly gosh, you can't even swim. You're not allowed to sail. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they don't fish. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, uh, last one, because they're yelling at us. Peter, he writes, Guys, um, hi guys at Talking Fish, I love the show. Watching tonight's show, you spoke about bass yabbies and mentioned you didn't see many people using them uh, and catching bass yabbies for bait. Lack yeah. of knowledge or information on how and where to find and catch them is the main reason. I think many of us keen fishers don't target for bait collection. Any advice, information on locations or techniques when targeting th them for bait? have pumped before in the Hopkins River and Killarney Beach. Other than that, I have no idea where, where in Melbourne to find them. Mm -hmm. um, they are everywhere. Yeah, um, any hot, tidal. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the Mornington Peninsula, virtually from yep. Rosebud through to Blair Gowrie, yep. is yep. riddled with bash abbeys yep. um, on those sandbank areas. And you just wait mm. for a little bit of a low tide to get out there with a standard yabby pump yep. and uh, just pump away. If, you pump, up, if you pump up a bit of that stone black, point, that black so yeah. Move on. They're not, they're not on. there. You yeah. want the, those yeah, clean... Yeah, yeah. And if there's little holes and stuff everywhere on a low tide... Yep. There's that's the holes. That's where they are. That's where yeah. they are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yep. And plenty of them, and they're good whiting bait. Uh, if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197. Or email kramer at ifish.com.au. Coming up, the all important hotspots next on Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Wilson's Tackle World Premium. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for. Hotspots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. The all important hotspots, I tell you. I'm going to dub you in now because you put what? a snake in your mouth just then and you dumped it on the table. And, and they start, <laughs> and they <laughs> start counting down. That's terrible. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Oh, half chewed. You put that. Half a chewed snake. <laughs> I put it in with. I put it in as soon as I put it in my mouth. That's no good. They Thank started counting down from 10 in my ear. <laughs> That's a fine. That's a fine. And, um, <laughs> I didn't have enough time to chew the snake and swallow it. Anyway. So anyway. That's what <laughs> It has been a night of dribble, hasn't it? It has. <laughs> Go down as an old-time great, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, all right, plastic. let's kick it off. The snapper uh, in 
um, the bay well and proper. Yep. Just need a little bit of temperature. A couple yeah, of days, pretty which quick now. Like, sure. yeah, no. Top end of the bay is fishing well. Yeah, yeah. Good so yeah. around that Geelong area, yeah, Charlie, around your area, Point Richards, out in the snapper. channel. Yep. Some good snapper come through this week. There is, yeah. And um, like I say, the top end of the bay is you know, just kicked off, but yep. now we're starting to see those catches down there. So um, yeah. with that bit of blow, like you say, that gives all the snapper the signal to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a bit of temperature rise we need. Yeah. Get out there. On the other side of the bay, Mount Eliza is just fishing superbly. Um, people can get out by kayak if they want. They Small can. Small craft off Mount Eliza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Deep, gets, quick. Yeah. And, and, the, and the closing fishing is really good there too. It mm. drops off quickly, so they'll get up on the banks in the... Rougher weather or yeah. low light levels. Land based thing. Uh, no, it's probably a little bit. It's pretty crazy shallow in mm. close. So if you got in some of the rock platforms, it have to mm. be pretty rough though. I know some so boats that can cast three hundred meters. What? Oh, That's what they've right. told me. Well, they can cast further than old kayak. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have the pub on Saturday night. <laughs> no, no, boats come in. They can cast three hundred meters. Really? That's what they reckon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, we get them all. <laughs> you just get those bikes too, don't you? I know. They're off the streets in Shepparton, are they? I know, over Geelong. I'm going to say something, but I won't. Uh, let's head over to Western Port and Lysart's It's fishing very, very well at the moment. Bad boys. HP, you mean, Dave? Blue Scope Steel, thank you very much. Yeah, righto, same thing. Uh, yeah. Kramer Steel. <laughs> steel. Uh, 18 metres. Yep. 19 metres. Mm-hmm. Good spot. You know the season's going all right. It's really starting to fire. Now, with lots um, Anyone wants to yeah. see some decent fish caught, Sean Furtier, Think Big Charters, um, have a look on yeah. his yep. social media pages, just sensational catches. Um, Gummy. and he, I mean, he's yeah. fishing whiting, calamari, snapper, gummies. and gummies, yeah. just yeah. absolutely <laughs> killing it. But some good snapper, and I know he doesn't put up his spots, but bet you some of them are lice arts. Chase his boat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another one that pops up around this time of year, which fishes very, very well, mm. bit of current there, silver yeah. leaves. Yeah, and this has been big time the last few yeah. years. It's definitely, it used to be a little hidey hole. You know, all the people that fish at silver leaves just said, oh yeah, we fished at Coronella. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. cats out of the bag now. Yeah, yeah. silver, silver leaves is the place to go. So. Let's head inland and uh, out the back of Geelong, Trelly. I've got yep. this one from uh, Chris during the week that there's some nice trout being caught at Lake Parambit. Yeah, that's one of the spots uh, over there. It's a you know, great launching facility there, yeah. which has been upgraded in the last couple of years as well. Yep. Um, it's, it's a great lake. It's, it's bu- one of those crater lakes. Fish sledding it? table 100 metres from the ramp? Yeah, at they least. They yeah. wouldn't stand for that crap up there, would they? No, no <laughs> not, not, not dog. John Clementine, no. But, no. Um, yeah, great spot. And it's, it's amazing. Like, you can be in, like, 10 foot of water, then 60, 80 foot of water, and back to 30 and things like that. So Hard to downrig you. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's a really pretty place to go to. Yeah, yeah. All right, lucky last is a lovely little trout stream Ooh. called the Tangil River. Tangil. Uh. Upstream from Lake Narakan. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. So you might have to go to Maui. Just be careful as you travel through there. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're trying to offend people during this break. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> don't have a good so job of it tonight. Yeah. Just be careful going through Maui. Don't <laughs> talk about it. What? Oh, Maui? Didn't he wear a Maxima hat, that bloke? Anyway, quickly on. Oh, don't talk about that. Keep going. He would know, have been wearing moccasins because everyone does. Yeah. Or one. Mm. I Keep seen going. a bloke in Maui and... and um, Mick. Mick, you know Mick, don't Mick you? I saw him in. No. <laughs> oh, he's the mayor of Maui. Yeah, yeah. I saw him walking down the street one day, yeah. and he only had one moccasin on. Mm. I said, "Mate, did you lose one?" He said, "No, I found one." <laughs> <laughs> Another letter. No, it was the people they get that down on social Just media. Delete that there. part, Kev. <laughs> Just for Dave's sake. Uh, all good. <laughs> um, what are we going to talk about? That's the hot spots, by the way. Tangle River trout. I think we're done. Yep. yep. Um, it's, it is. The Melbourne Cup weekend this weekend. That's right. I'd be back in the Japanese and that same jockey that's won the Caulfield. You know, if he went down. Don't, don't know what you're talking about. Talking anyway, about. it is fishing time well, he's, in he, a long weekend. He's Big won nice. the Caulfield Cup and the Cox Plate on a Jap. Two different Japanese horses. If you don't right. back him in the Melbourne Cup, he'll become the first right. jockey to win all three in one single spring. Honda Kawasaki, what's his name? Yeah, right. No, Suzuki. Where Suzuki. are you going for the long weekend? Uh, home, work. Mm. What about you? I'll be at Taco Bell Grand. What about you, Charlie? No, nah, I'm thinking of going out and having a bit of a fish. I've been having a bit of a good run on the yellow belly. Yep. So if I get the chance to go out and hone my skills, yeah. take out, you know, I'm going to pick on the most expensive rod and reel I've got in the shop and go and dangle a worm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Charlie, yeah, one yeah, like style. Do, you? Yeah. Like style. <laughs> or you take the, 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 the least expensive gear out yep. and uh, have the same fun. Yep. Yeah, there you go, mate. Mm. What, size, exactly. um, what size motor have you got on your tinny? Uh, I've got uh, 115 on the um, 
I'm not tinny. Oh, yeah, so you can unbolt you, that quite easily. If you can kindly easily. remove it yeah, before you move it, and head down to... Oh, no, hang on, is it under yeah. 12 foot? <laughs> no. Fit on your roof of your car? No. Don't get can up. You, can, you lift it, can, can you lift it? Can you lift it? Just to drag it up and down the back a couple times. In all seriousness, we're a month and a little bit, a month and a few days out from the start of COD season. Do people... Are people starting to go, oh, I can't wait till cod season? Or does that not happen? Oh, yeah, they do. It's probably a little bit more a bit more time to that. But but mm. everyone's sort of focused on Eildon now too because the yeah. cod has been fishing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the cod fishing's been really good at Eildon. Mm. And they're probably honing some of their skills up there with some of their uh, surface lures like early morning, late evening. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the water temperature's coming up. We've had you know, the fishers have been up there and done some electro fishing. Okay. Um, and some studies have been done. So there's there's a lot of fish that, and I'll tell you now, a lot of fish up there that are in not very deep water, so you can still get to them really? with, with you know, not real big deep diving lures. Work your banks, work your structures. So, yeah, um, yeah. but yes, cod yeah. season's coming up. Yeah. There you go. Getting pretty excited. Um, and of course, you know, like I said earlier on, we're in the prime of trout season as well. So yeah. some of those rivers that are just sensational. Up around Eildon, Delatite, That's right. Kaukwa, yeah. Jamison, Golden yeah. Rivers. Yeah. Just snakes. Little, little bit yeah. of a tip there too with the um, fishing up at Eildon. Mm. Be, be aware that there is a line, and it's sort of like a line of sand that shifts as far as the, the inflowing water from the rivers to the lake. Yeah, there you go. All right. Mm. That's it for Talking mm. Fishing. Next week, it's Melbourne Cup Day, and the show will not be live, but... It's a show you must watch, and we hope you back a winner as well next Tuesday. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and the roads if you're travelling on the Cup weekend, and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.